Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to Better Together, the Connecticut edition. We're coming to you live from the East Coast. Uh, it is Tuesday, July 28th, 2020, they tell me. <laughs> July 28th, guys. July 28th. Oh, my Lord. Uh, our quote of the day, appreciation is the purest vibration that exists on the planet today. And that is from Esther Hicks. Today, I'm very excited to bring you guys uh, a friend of the show. She has been on before. She is incredible. Uh, if you've seen the documentary Heal that we talk about on the regular here, she was featured in it. Her name is Patty Penn. She's a Reiki master, and she's going to talk to us about how to arm ourselves against the physical, the emotional, the energetic challenges uh, that come along with this global pandemic. And yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward I to just that. love how Me Scottish too. she is. I knew she was European and I love, I used to work with a bunch of Europeans right after college. It's a long story. We can save it for another show, but uh -huh. was that when I, you were in your quartet days, Jeff? That was the quartet days. Yes. Yeah. Um, everyone I worked with was European, but I worked on a cruise ship. We can get into it in another episode, but um, I particularly love Scottish people. So when I got on the line with Patty and I heard that lovely Scottish accent, I was like, I already like you. I can't wait for tomorrow's show. Oh, wait, so man. I need to, we need to pull up video. Jeff showed us in like a devastating moment recently. We were like trying to cheer ourselves up. He showed us the fact that he was uh, part of a quartet and he was like a yes. boy bander and he did like little thrust, his hip thrusting moves. Yes. And yes. Uh, our sweet little Jeff was a our little, sweet little Jeff. a Ooh. little so sassy back in the day. That's how he reeled in his wife. He was sassy. It's he had a good like <laughs> jazz square going. Ooh, the outfit. We need to pull the video yeah. and Jeff. we need to show everybody. Jeff. But the cruise is that. Else. I want to be careful with our copyright. So we'll make sure before we air it that it's safe right. to air, but if right, not, right. we'll there on Patreon, but uh, yes. it was quite a, a wonderful chapter of my life. Wait, Wait that's so, good. So the cruise time, was that you <laughs> quartetting? Yeah, so that I was the it. quartet was it. on a cruise. It was <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Dead. Oh, it, it was. So uh, we should, if it's ever interesting, and I, I will say, I can, <laughs> that chapter of my life was a fascinating six months. If you want to peek behind the curtain as to what ship life is, I ship think it life. could be a fun little Patreon segment. And uh, as Maria will see in our rundown, our Patreon's been doing some really cool stuff lately. I don't know if it's in line with our uh, our content, Jeff. <laughs> I, I'll peek <laughs> behind your quartetism in on a cruise ship. I don't know how you bridge the gap between that and what we do every week, but you find a way and you share it with me and I will torture our Patreon. Well, I mean, educate our <laughs> Patreon members. I'll pitch it to Maria and see if we can, if I'm she it in somehow. dying. But meanwhile, thank you guys for joining us. And if you aren't a Patreon member already and you want to see Jeff's quartet life. Yes. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, you uh, you will really enjoy the content I think that we're doing there. We can deep dive a little bit more. We don't have the YouTube rules there, so we can curate amazing mm -hmm. clips that we can walk through and talk through. Um, and we're also, aside from the amazing kind of exclusive content we're doing there, we're doing some great giveaways and we're really starting to ramp that up. Um, I've decided that I'm gonna do some massive closet giveaways. Um, I have literally boxes of jewelry and stuff that just, I don't know what to do with it, so I'm just going to give it to you guys. Uh, so join us at Patreon. We have an incredible testimonial from a Patreon member who got one of our uh, giveaways, and it was from the Bella Twins life coach, Carrie Rose. She said, what an amazing surprise to be gifted a life coaching session by Carrie Rose from Maria and the Better Together podcast. Speaking with one of Maria's guests directly simply because I'm a member of Patreon was not something that I imagined would ever happen. My one-on-one -on -one time with Carrie felt like an extension of Maria's interview with her. It was surreal. Oh, Yay. I love that. Erica Hatala, very happy for you. Um, and we also, I didn't mention actually, oh, I did mention the three tiers yesterday. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, our guest yesterday, who I've been raving about to every female <laughs> I have come across, I'm like, oh my God, I had like all these conference calls yesterday. I'm like, you've got to listen to my show yesterday. I must sound like a raving fan of myself, but it's not me. <laughs> it's her. Um, I get so psycho crazy about the content. So yeah. she was incredible yesterday, Elisa. And, um, She's doing giveaways, uh, a book, a, um, some vitamins that are worth like $280. Mm -hmm. And what was the third package? A year long subscription to the MyFlow app, which, yeah. you know, people who have struggled with hormonal issues say has literally changed their life. So I'm stunned by what our Patreon community has access to. 
And um, we, we're randomly selecting. And the way I'm going to start designing it is if we are doing a single tier pick, the higher your tier, the more likely you are to get selected. You get entered multiple times. So all of our patrons are eligible, but our top tier patrons are the most likely to get picked for these giveaways. I want to do some fun random selects that yeah. we film. Like we put three biscuits in front of Max <laughs> and each biscuit represents a different person. And then whichever that. one he picks gets to win the big prize. I think that's perfect. So like, and it. then we have like a small child, like a randomly pick, like <laughs> a small child. point to a Excuse person, me? point to something on this page. <laughs> and then it's like, Kelsey wins. I, love I just want the most random random ways to choose i think it'll be so fun join us on uh youtube subscribe we're seeing our numbers exploding so thank you and uh help us if you can by sharing the show to people that you know would love it we want to expand this community and make it bigger and stronger and we'll continue to bring you incredible guests that will blow your mind help you change you shift you solve problems um it's kind of uh kind of a passion so we love doing it. Um, speaking of passions, animals are my passion, but I also do love butterflies. Yes. I wouldn't say insects are a passion, but I do love resuscitating insects. And so what? I have... What does that even mean? Do you, know, do you not know my insect stories? No. Oh, Kelsey, we're in nature, so you need to know that I've got powers. Please tell. Do okay. tell. So, Jeff, you've heard the story, right? Oh, yeah. And, uh, unbelievable. Okay, I'm gonna try to do it really fast. So I was in my pool. It was after I'd produced a feature film. I was really exhausted. I was alone and super bored and there was a cricket in the middle of the water. So I like flushed it up to the top, put it on the concrete, started pushing on its abdomen with a leaf stem because I was gonna dissect it, okay? <laughs> and then poop came out and all of a sudden I started realizing like, huh, that's interesting. So I started pushing on the abdomen more and I inadvertently gave it CPR. No! And the cricket came back to life, but it was stuck with the the water and the concrete. Its antennas are really long. So I put a leaf underneath and I blow dried its antennas. And it literally ran <laughs> away from me, turned around, came right to the edge of the pool, got up on his like hind legs and went like this in my face. And I'm like, oh my God, go tell your family you're alive, little guy. This is amazing. He literally said thank you to me, a no. cricket. Swear no. to God. So so today I had a butterfly experience, and I'll tell oh. you. And a friend of mine, yes. Gabby, she's a healer as well, she sent me a video Wayne Dyer um, had done about a butterfly that oh came to gosh. him. And so anyhow, uh, that's the cricket story. And I told everybody, and my husband said, never tell that story because people are going to think Why? you're crazy. No. And so, Kevin. yeah. So then uh, we're on vacation in Mexico with my parents, and I this grasshopper I was like playing with literally dove from the top pool down to its death in this massive waterfall and I'm like Kevin you gotta help him oh my god you gotta go help him so I made him go all the way down to the other pool around go into the water get the grasshopper and brings it back so he ends up on the table and I go behold this is a dead grasshopper correct and everyone's like yes. yes and i go i will now bring it back to life and i'm totally like not thinking this is really going to happen by the way right yeah but i was like i have special powers and so i take the grasshopper and i start giving it the chest compressions like i did with the cricket oh my God. well nothing's happening because they have a really hard shell so i had to start using my brain and guys i i guess i have super super um common sense you can't get to its heart through that. So what I did was I went under its little armpits. No, and Maria. you have to be so careful to not get its legs because their legs are very dainty. You'll break them. So I went in there with my little fingers and went ding ding ding. And I started doing the little compressions. Grasshopper comes back to life. Stop. Stop. I I'm not even joking. Grasshopper comes back to life, and I'm like, holy shit! And then he he gets up and he flies away, and we're like, oh my god, Kevin. And my parents, I have the chills. Their faces were insane. So I love this. I've since tried to resuscitate a few caterpillars. It did not Didn't work. Pan out. I mean, I tried. <laughs> I tried so hard. Um, and so anyway, there was another insect, Jeff. I gave you a video you were supposed to edit, and I forget what was it. A prank mantis. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Um, anyhow, he came back to life, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was another one. Not oh, yeah. Bad. I forgot about him. That's another one to add. Well, see, this is, yeah. you told me the other day that you wanted to be a vet when I you know. were little. Yeah. So it's like, hey. Yeah, I just knew I couldn't put them to sleep. So that ended that. Right. But right. Um, today on our little walk, we've been waking up early in the morning to go on walks yes, here. getting our day started early, Jeff. And uh, 
And so we found a butterfly in the middle of the road, just on the ground, this beautiful monarch butterfly. So I was like talking to it and I'm like, come on, little guy, come on up, climbs my hand and then doesn't move. And I'm like, okay. I was like, you want to go for a walk with us? And then Kelsey named her Pearl. I did. She and was so, so cute. we took we <laughs> took her on our walk. She stood. She she was on my hand for like ten minutes easy, as we walked the streets of Connecticut. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I could see she was getting a little antsy. So I was like, well, maybe she wants to go. So I put her down on a shrub, and then that was it. That was it. So Wayne Dyer. <laughs> has has a really great um, butterfly story, but I asked everybody on Instagram and everyone's saying that monarch butterflies um, come to you either, it's somebody from your, that's passed on, mm-hmm. or it's um, it's a sign of transformation, kind of uh, rebirth, yeah, like yeah. new beginnings. Yeah. And it does come at a very interesting time because I am reevaluating everything and everyone in my life right now. Mm-hmm. If people are bringing me stress, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to really, really rethink everything because it has just been far too long of having to carry a lot of dead weight around. Yep. And I've had to shake a tree for a long, long time. And so I'm going to spend this weekend. We're going to spend, we're going to yep, do our Aaron sister. Falconer from that episode, yep. our goals list. Mm-hmm. I'm going to reassess everything I'm doing in my life bring it down to three buckets keep it very simple Mm -hmm. and then um and then I'm gonna reassess like friendships everything like I just yeah uh, and so maybe that's why the butterfly was coming it's like okay no you're on the right track do it and I was like yeah cool that's what I think people in the chat are saying they liked it thank you oh do you have the video you want to play it it. okay let's pop it up pop it up okay okay Mind you, this is Kelsey's first day engineering in here. So we can't see it on here. This is the coolest thing ever. Yeah, you don't want to be in the street when cars are coming. <laughs> oh, little guy! Um, so I can't see it, but you could see. They can see it. They saw yeah. the whole thing. Um, I'm learning to put it on Zoom for Maria so she can see it. It's yeah. a whole setup, you guys. Well, you know, you're gonna figure it out because you really want to. I love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we also had a really fun time last night, so we did some shooting here yesterday, and oh gosh, yes. um, and in a stressful moment, I decided to de-stress. I I was like, I'm gonna go take some Airborne. I went upstairs, and I realized, well, I can't just have Airborne myself. I have to share with everybody. So from the top of the stairs, I started tossing down Airborne and seeing who could catch it. <laughs> It was Which is hilarious. kind of unsafe, by the way, because Kelsey's like, what oh. if I choke? I go, hey, Steven, do you know CPR? <laughs> I literally was like, YouTuber, yeah. I mean, <laughs> Heimlich. Do you know the Heimlich? I know yeah. I've had to do the Heimlich before on a, on a five-year-old. It was awful. Um, but uh, but everyone survived. There were no injuries, just a lot of laughs. You want to play a that? A lot of laughs. Yep. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Kelsey, here we go. Vitamin C down the hatch. <laughs> <laughs> You guys. I I watched this so many times, Are you Jeff, guys ready and for cried this one? laughing. Go ahead. Kelsey, here we go. No, Wait, wrong one. That's, see, that's me again. You guys are really getting the full the full thing here. Okay. Back to back to the Steven one. This is uh I'm teasing you guys because the Steven one is Steven's amazing. I actually have another one. Okay, if you go to my stories where i do an extreme close up of his face, I, I can't. Okay, ready for this, you guys? Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't choke! Oh. <laughs> 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 he bounced off his nose. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, my laugh went wicked witch of like the West. <laughs> I'll get you my pretty. I I love it. So haven't laughed funny. that hard in so long. Where was on the ground clearly on the ground crying visibly guys, it was amazing so I was also good. stunned by that room i've never seen the connecticut house before and that mm-hmm. beautiful library so like towering and grand i want to see it oh yeah come on down jeff come on down point, jeff point, yeah come on down come yes. on down oh man it was so funny we uh we 
you know, you need those moments when you're, Mm -hmm. you know, you need moments of levity. And so um, that was, that was ours. Uh, Meanwhile, before we get to our interview with Patty, uh, a not as fun note, but I do have to mention this because I saw it trending yesterday and I want you guys to be very careful. So the FDA has expanded its list of toxic hand sanitizers. P.S. didn't know hand sanitizers could be toxic, but there are some that actually poison your bloodstream through skin absorption, which by the way, we really need to be rethinking what we're putting on our skin yes. in general. We oh. need to do an entire episode, by the way, on skincare and what all of this stuff does that we're putting on our faces and bodies. Mm-hmm. So ethanol is a safe FDA approved product, but methanol is not FDA approved and it can cause blindness or even death. Mom and pop hand sanitizer companies are releasing unsafe products, apparently, as they keep try to keep up with demand. So for a full list of 87 hand sanitizer products flagged by the FDA, you can check out the link in the description. But let's look at the mm-hmm. ones that we have. I wanted to see, do, do any of these have methanol? Nope. Okay. Not that one. Perfect. This one. Ethyl alcohol. That's fine. That's fine. Okay. Water, combro, and something that's as long as it doesn't have methanol. So no, we can use both of these. Okay, cool. I'm scared. Most of them are international. So especially if you're in Mexico, I think almost half of them were Mexican-based hand sanitizer products. So just yeah, especially if you're in Mexico, um, double check those labels, and they might not even have it on the label. So just look at the list in the description. Jeff, yeah. will you find one, test it out, and let us know how you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey, I just called I'll you Jeff, Jeff Stephen, and Kelsey all at once. But not Chelsea. It's but not okay. Chelsea. Yeah. Just kidding, Jeff. Oh man. I know. All right. Well, let's get to our interview with Patty. I'm very excited to chat with her. Patty is a globally renowned Reiki healer, the founder of Pause and Joy Awareness and Lifestyle Program. She was featured in 2017's critically acclaimed Heal documentary. Uh, she uses powerful techniques to bring healing to her clients, and she's here today to share some of those techniques with us and to shed light on how we can find gratitude and comfort during this time, despite the upheaval across the world. Patty Penn, so happy to have you back today. Oh, so happy to be here. Thank you for asking me back on. Oh my gosh. I love better together. It's been a long time uh, mm-hmm. and too long. I, I have to say... You know, we, um, our studio has now powered down twice. So if anybody is watching, I want you to know this is not normal. uh, And we're going to find the solution to it. But Patty, is there an energetic reason we should be considering? Seriously. (laughs) Too much energy in the, in the, (laughs) in the internet right now. But let's see what's going to come up. I know. Oh, please tell us, Patty. No. (laughs) Well, it's funny because even as we were trying to get back up, we were talking about, uh, life cleanups and a butterfly Mm. we found a butterfly on the street today just on the road and so i went to pick it up and it came out of my hand and went for a walk with us yeah it was unbelievable it was like 10 minutes and then i kind of felt her energy wanting to like get down so i was like okay so i put her Mm. on a shrub and she kind of flew and i was like okay cool but you know, I, what I've read and I've asked my followers on Instagram, you know, it's it's a sign either of someone coming to you from, you know, that's passed on or transformation mm-hmm. or new beginnings. And I definitely feel like I'm in that right now. But I think collectively, everybody's trying to find their new beginning because it's mm-hmm. a collective reset. This is, I, I say to everyone, if you're ever going to dump your old life and start a new one, it's now. Um, yeah, so tell yeah. me what you're thinking. Well, the butterflies are really beautiful, right? But when you look at the transformation from the caterpillar and when it goes in the cocoon, it has to turn into like a smoothie to transmute itself into the butterfly. Mm -hmm. It's quite a gnarly process. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and we look at the butterfly and we're like, that's so beautiful, but we don't want to look at this transition phase, which is something I work with a lot of the smoothie phase, where people have to look at some of the dark things that have happened in their life. Some of the, they have to go there the to it the it that they don't want to go to Mm -hmm. uh, because it lingers. It's like the elephant in the room, the inherited beliefs, you know, because 
when we have patterns in our life or repetitive things or people that come into our life, you're like, oh, that's exactly the same as the last three bosses that I've had. Yep. You have to ask yourself, why, what is it in me that is putting up with this? Why am I not valuing who I am or what I have and I'm buying into something that might not be true for me? Maybe I keep going to these different jobs because I really need to start my own thing. And how many times do I need to get the same person bully me? Yeah. Yeah. And so, we, we've had a session we, on this before and yeah. it's true. You know, we, when we talk about it, the patterns are there. It's, it's, they're just signals like, okay, what, like, yeah, you're not valuing yourself or you're not, um, you're not, um, yeah, usually it's like, I think it's like that. Like, at least for me, it was, I wasn't valuing myself enough and, or at all. Um, and then the same thing kept happening over and over. Because we take ourselves for granted. That's the gratitude, right? You take the ideas that come to you for granted. You know, there's someone sitting today that could have an innovation, that could have an idea about something that's going to change you, uh, the landscape of how we do something. You know, back in 2008, there was a lot of innovations that came out of that time period. You know, Uber was started. All of these things started. So we have to you know, when those ideas come to us, when those innovations, when those inspirations come to us, they've chosen us. But we lack the gratitude that it's chosen us if I don't feel enough. If I, if I, if I have the belief that I'm not enough or I, uh, I'm not worthy, then who am I to bring that forward? Yeah. Or ask for help and how to get this off the ground or you know, you feel there's a lack of of having the responsibility, the having the ability to respond to that thing that's calling you. And that is a lot to overcome, especially in marginalized communities, especially with people who weren't brought up with cheerleading parents, especially where they were brought up in environments that were, say, hostile to you know you have the the there's an expression called the tall poppy syndrome of standing out of um you know they'll cut your head off <laughs> or who do you think you are so these are the things that you all, you always have to overcome and i think a lot of people are looking at what is it i really want to do now you know, i mean this is a it, it's it's an incubation period for everyone it's it's global this is a, a phenomenon. Yeah. So when you really kind of think about it like that, you, you have to then go into kind of self-regulation and self-inquiry of like, what is stopping me deciding to become a yoga teacher? What is stopping me writing that book? What is stopping me uh, starting that initiative in my town or that after school program or, you know, the mindfulness program for kids? What is it that's in my way? And then you have to excavate and dig it up. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes it can be scary. Oh yeah, because... it's great pushing that shit down. You just keep that down, hide it under the bed, don't deal with it, but it keeps yeah, well, rearing its we're ugly head. Cooker. I mean, everybody's in the pressure cooker. And we're here to say that, you know, we're better together when everybody's bringing forward what their joy is or what their idea is and us all celebrating that, you know, as all supporting each other's um, execution, you know, not the thinking of it. When people talk about stuff a lot and they think, they talk and talk and it goes around in the head, you want to be able to get it out and executed and start to make the steps towards you know, looking at how to build that website, looking how to build that Patreon page, looking at uh, how you're going to get the grant for that initiative for your community. You know, all the different things. And there's there's so many avenues now. And I think it's it's a place where people are, are really in action, but sometimes they don't have the tools to know how to overcome. 
Yeah, the tools are important. They, they get anxious. They, they hang on labels of, I'm too anxious. I have, you know, I feel, you know, I get lazy or uh, I procrastinate. You know, these are labels that are really hiding something that's a disguise for fear. Hmm. And when you start to go behind the disguise, you start to see your own stuff. And I have a process, I'm actually creating a, a website right now called The Cope Kit. And it's for people that don't know how to cope, but it will kind of open things up for you to unpack what are the patterns? What are my limiting beliefs? What are my inherited beliefs? Mm -hmm. You know, because when I look at, you know, people who say, well, my father didn't do that, didn't activate. He never went and did that company that he was supposed to do. And I said, but you're doing the same thing. (laughs) You know, but that was the 1950s. This is 2010, 2020. So, you know, what is the thing that you have in common that's coming down the generations of, I just don't feel that I I have, you know, the capability or I just don't feel that I have the confidence or the permission is the big one. Talk about that. You know, people feel like they need some kind of permission slip they need some permission to, they're waiting to be anointed by something or someone. It's kind of like a Oliver Twist, right? Please, sir, can I have some more? Please, sir, can I, you know, bring my initiative forward? Please, sir, who do I think I am? And when you start to excavate those things, you start to see that this is something coming down your wherever you were brought up, it might be culturally, it might be uh, society wise, it might be because you're, you know, you, that was the message you received as a woman, maybe that was the message you received uh, as a a person of color, you know, these are the things that we're overcoming now so that everybody, it's just not the confident that are bringing their, 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 their initiatives and their ideas forward, it's everyone. Yeah. How do you that, fix that though? How do you fix needing or thinking you need permission? Uh, you have to collapse it. You have to collapse this need within you that is buying in to the excuse that you need permission because that's another disguise for fear. Mm. And delay is the big one. And now that there's no distractions, You can't go out for dinner, sit with your friends, or Mm -hmm. go pick up your coffee. There's no distractions for anyone. You're just sitting with yourself. And when you sit with yourself, you start to see where you're wasting time and why you are delaying doing what you came here to do, which is sometimes you know, when people really tap into that, you know, they're, every single person has something that they came here to bring forward. You know, the, the Sufis call it like the treasure within. And, you know, God said, where, where will I hide it? Where will we put it so that they'll go out and look for it? And they said, well, the last place they will look inside. Because we look for it all outside of the validation or someone saying, oh, yes, you have permission to do better together. You have permission to do your idea. Hmm. You have permission to go there. You have permission to um, be the rock star that you came here to be, whatever that is, or be the, the light in your community that you came here to be. But maybe that's between you and your own communion of your future self, compelling you, pulling you, or the universe, if that's your connection, or God, or spirit, you know, when we start to connect to that inner listener, and then the knower within, the thing that knows, then you start to see shifts, because you can't ignore it. 
we're really good at ignoring. Yeah, it's a lot easier. I think that's, oh, yeah. that, that's the problem, right? As you go through life and you keep, like I said, pushing that stuff down or hiding it under the, the mental or the emotional bed and the patterns just keep coming, the things keep coming and you just kind of learn you you have a tolerance level right like for me i had a breakthrough yesterday mm -hmm. where i realized that kevin and i have an incredible tolerance for abuse mm -hmm. because we grew up in abusive situations and so we are incredibly okay with people around us taking advantage of us um being not kind um being complete narcissists um yeah. because we grew up with narcissists and so it hit me yesterday and i know we've had these moments maybe before but we were always in our tornadoes but it's like it's really connecting with me now where yeah. it's like oh okay this is a pattern this is a problem we have gone through life just carrying so many people and allowing um yes. allowing it which is our fault um and and we're exhausted from it so now it's like we got to clean up because i can't live like this anymore yes but there's a few things going on with that because you have normalized yeah you it was normal for you to be in those abusive situations growing up so it's kind of predictable for you to be in those because it's safe. It's something you know, it's you know. familiar. Yeah, and but I share I this in case somebody else is is dealing with this as well, because, you know, I, I'm doing a lot of work and I'm still having to un, unfold and dig up this stuff. So yeah, I mean, keep talking, it's, it's a lot. But, but here's the other part of it. You mentioned the narcissists that you attract. Mm -hmm and you help a lot of people. But if you were to really start to expand your capacity for joy, both you and Kevin, to enjoy more, would that seem narcissistic to you? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guilt that you have when you're living your best life and other people aren't. So I think that's part of the problem, right? You, that's why when people are successful in life, they bring everybody with them. They take care of everybody. They pay for everybody because there's like a guilt, a success guilt, right? Yes, but that guilt is not serving you or Kevin no. because think of the initiatives that you could create and the reach that you could create if you weren't holding yourself back with that guilt. Yeah. Think of the foundations or whatever it is that you would get involved in, because I know you get involved in a lot of charities and what greater things that you could do if you weren't stroking your guilt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think I have that anymore. I think that you get there at some point and yeah. then it becomes your swimming pool. That's the pool you're swimming in. Mm, and yeah. so I have to get out of this pool. I gotta go build a new one. I gotta, I gotta drain this one and go build a new one with slides and waterfalls. And like, mm -hmm. I just, I gotta go build a new pool because I can't be my best self until I do. Or you just decide right now that there is no building of the pool and you just decide that the pool that you're in is going to have the water slides, is going to have the noodles, is going to have the best people that you can work with, because mm -hmm. that's going to repel whoever's in the pool. They're mm. just going to get out the pool. Okay. Because they can't bear being around you in that vibration. Mm. It's unbearable. <laughs> so there's there's no more building. There's just you to be more you and Kevin to be more Kevin and decide that that's what you want to uh, focus on and put your energy in and have, you know, and really trust your energetic integrity. And then the energy takes care of it itself. They just get spat out or they get pinged out. 
They can't be around it. When you're compensating for them, they'll be there. Yeah. When you're pandering to them because you don't want them to hate you, they'll be there. But the moment you decide to put that switch and just switch it, they will they will leave. Yeah. So they find their own way out. They they yeah, work themselves it's out. It's too nauseating. Yeah. <laughs> to be around. Yeah. You know because it's 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 a different frequency. Yeah. Everything's frequency. Everything's energy. Even your emotions are energy. Patty, you're so right. I know you're always right, but even I declared this maybe 24 hours ago, maybe 48 hours ago, and literally I'm already seeing it happen. Yes. People are flocking like, goodbye. And I'm like, oh, cool. Not having to do it myself. Bye. Yeah. There's nothing to do. It's like when when people begin working with me, I say in my level one book, you know, there will be people that will just leave your life when you start to do this work because they don't they didn't sign up for this person so it's not their fault they didn't sign up for this person they signed up for the other person that they could hijack or take hostage mm-hmm. wow. yeah kevin's really good at being taken hostage i am not as hard but by proxy i get taken hostage and i don't yeah. want to do it anymore no no and that's that's for kevin to clear yeah. And know that it's affecting you and your orbit because you're together. Yeah. Oh my God. I might send you to do a clearing to him. He needs it so bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. I mean, I need it terribly too, but you're. We all need some Patty. I know. It's, <clears throat> you know, these are things that people don't really have um, clear direction on, right? Like energy is so powerful. The second, like I said, I'm, I started saying, I am done. I am done having to carry people, beg people to do their job, beg people to do something, and having to ask 10 times for the same thing. I don't know why I got myself into this situation, but I'm done. Like, I'm done. And so whatever that means, I can love you personally, but professionally, we can't do this. And then in the personal life, I'm done. (laughs) I'm just done. I want to be free. I want to be happy. I want to, I want to, put my attentions where they, you know, they're going to go and work with people who are going to work with me and elevate me, not drag me down. I'm exhausted, Patty, but I'm not the only one that feels like this. There are so many people out there that are trying to like, it's almost like you're like a racehorse chained to like a wall. And you're like, I want to go, I want to go, but they're holding me and you just got to cut those chains or I mean, they're not holding you. You just have to decide that you want to work with the best and the people that support you. And, uh, and it may be when they come, this is the thing, when those people do come, you start to feel, if that's not your normal set point, if that's not your normal familiar, it starts to feel a little out of sorts at times. It starts to feel too good to be true. Mm-hmm. It starts to feel that you're suspicious of someone that's just helping you. Hmm. And that's what you need to look at is why am I feeling suspicious of this person that has no agenda? Oh, because I'm bringing my party to their generosity or their, uh, and I need to be more grateful. Mm-hmm. There's the gratitude again. Yeah. Because some people just want to help you because they love what you're doing, but you get all suspicious if you have a program that's like, what's their game? Like, what do mm-hmm. they want? Yeah. You, you know I mean, your, your hypervigilance kicks in, right? Yeah. Your, um, all the programs of like, yeah, they're too good to be true. What's their game? What's their agenda? So and someone true. that doesn't have an agenda, someone that doesn't have an ulterior motive, I'll just be like, you know what? You're too much hard work and they'll move on. Wow. Because they're not there to jump through hoops to make you feel safe. Yeah. It's just there to help you, but if it makes you feel out of sorts, there's nothing they can really do. Because you have to meet it and you have to allow it to be what it is, which is generous. And if there is strings attached, you can say, you know, oh, I didn't, I, I didn't realize that it was, you know, it involved that. But thank you, and you move on, and you move on to the next thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I um I feel like I've been manifesting, well, I I ask for an abundance of amazing people and partners and investors and um collaborators to come into my life every night. And mm -hmm. ever since I started doing it, that started happening. And I think that they become the light and then the dark is so dark. <laughs> You're like, "Oh, I could have this and this is what I've been dealing with." You're like, "Wait, huh?" <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's a transition phase. Yeah. Because it's not part of your normal. And it can make you feel almost a little uncomfortable. And you have your job is to clean that uncomfortability and where that is attaching to the 12 year old, where that is bringing up the five year old, where that is bringing up the 16 year old where that's bringing up something that happened to you in the business that really is derailing this opportunity. Yeah. And that's your work to do. Mm -hmm. Because the balance between am I, I'm a, am I not receiving this because it feels too much for me or and I'm using and now I'm going to use fear of being like suspiciousness to kind of push it away and practicality you know oh well that's just not for someone like me I, I whatever that means <laughs> or that's you know that's just not you know um part of my wheelhouse or that's just not you know um something that I can accept in my life because it just feels extremely uncomfortable. You have to look at those things. Why does it feel uncomfortable? But it's, you know, all you've got is time right now. Mm -hmm. This is the time to do the work. This is the time to look at it. Yeah. The it that the consciousness knows is it like the scary clown you know it knows what your it is and you have to eliminate it yeah I mean we have we have a little bit of time ahead of us right like if you think about it I yeah. I'm I don't see <laughs> I don't see a vaccine before the end of the year and also we keep talking about a vaccine like we're confident it's going to happen mm -hmm. but there have been no vaccines for other major diseases and viruses. So um, yeah. we may be living in this scenario for the next, at least for the rest of this year, obviously. I mean, yeah. we, you know, I think that's a, that's kind of a given. So if we prioritize our emotional wellness right now and really take stock of our lives, like Kelsey and I hmm. are spending the weekend and we're going to, you know, create yeah. our bucket list of what are the three buckets we're putting our energy into yeah. based on another guest on the show. And I'm going to reevaluate all of my relationships in my life and who I'm putting my time into mm -hmm. and my energies into. And, um, and I'm just going to really take stock of everything. I'm in the woods. So this is a perfect place for me to have yeah. a transformation and to, to think about things really carefully. But how does somebody who maybe hasn't even come to that place but they know something's wrong. How do they start? I think they've already started when they know something's wrong. When they know something's wrong, um, it can be overwhelming at first, but the more you begin to look and unpack it and realize that it can be shifted, then there's hope there because you might have you you may be in this position for 10 years 20 years mm -hmm. 15 years and when you get to it you get to it you know it's it's very difficult to see you know i mean i have 17 year olds and 16 year olds and 10 year olds that call me for you know to do the work but it's having the tools and knowing that we need to go forward with tools that even if I am going to launch a business, even if I am 
going to look at my partnerships, even if I am going to look at my friends, I'm going to have to need some tools along the way that are going to serve me that allows me to know, is this something that I'm using practicality for? Is this my fear that I'm imposing on this person? Or is this something that's just not for me and I need to take a pass on? You know, you said that, you know, you were going to look at all your friends and look at all your friend groups and stuff. I, I, I think it really is, you know, does this person make me feel lighter? Mm-hmm. Or does, when I'm around this, these people, this thing, whatever it is, do I feel heavy? Do I feel dense? Do I feel drained? Then there's your indicator. And then asking, I wonder what that would look like. I wonder what it would look like to feel um, lighter. I wonder what it would look like, you know, to have more joy in my life. I wonder what who would be my collaborators that I would really enjoy working with, that would make me feel lighter and lighter is more illuminated, it's feeling lighter, feeling energized. Rather than feeling obliged, I think maybe you work from a lot of obligations, like you feel obliged to take people with you. Mm-hmm. You feel obliged to um, give somebody a job that you know, you know, but you know that they're not qualified for it. And that obligation is stealing a job from another person that really wants to do that job but you're giving it to someone that just because they know you and think that they can do the job is is your (laughs) your work to do yeah because it's not about being disagreeable with people but it's about not being agreeable for agreeable sake it's about obedience I'm being obedient to this person because they think that they can, you know, work in my production company because I've known them for five years or they're my cousin's daughter or they're, they're my cousin, you know, whatever it is. Uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, is this the best person for the job? Yeah. Because I need the best people right now. Yeah. And I need to, because I want Kevin and I to do more work that I know I'm capable of that, you know, I know that you're only operating at 50% capacity. Yeah. <laughs> right? That sounds I about right. <laughs> but most people think, oh my goodness, you're doing, you're, you must be up there about 80 or 90. Nope. But deep down, you know, that you're between probably 45 and 50. Sometimes in a good day, you're 50 and you feel good. And then other times you're at 45 and you need to look at that other 50 and 55 Mm -hmm. that is blocking and limiting you, um, bringing more of that joy and bringing more of that light forward and bringing more of those inspirational moments that you bring into people's lives. Yeah. Because that's where you're cheating. You're cheating the contribution that you can make. Yeah, why I'm here. In the unknown, it's not even happened yet. But something doesn't sit well with you. So you know, you know something's not adding up. You know something's off. And you have to sit with the offness and be like, okay, I know that this feels uncomfortable. What is it? I wonder what it is that I can choose today. I wonder what it is I can contribute today to myself, to the world, to um, better together, you know, and you're making that contribution with your with your show, but how can I contribute even more? I love my show, but not, oh, I want to do something else and I'm not comfortable where I'm at. I'm loving my show. I love it. I enjoy it. But what else could I enjoy? Mm-hmm. And then there's the other people that don't enjoy where they're at right now. And they have to ask, what is, 
the things that are holding me back from that thing that is keeping me up late at night with research or, you know, no, you know, pulling at me and tugging at me and compelling me and calling me that I'm ignoring because I have the rant, you know, who do I think I am? And um, I don't have the permission that I have to dismantle. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of dismantling going on right now. So true. I mean, <clears throat> I know in our lives, we were dealt uh, some bricks from the sky to say, yep, what got you to Egypt isn't going to get you to the promised land. We need to change it up. And so yeah. there were, there was substantial, there was maybe like a house, not just a brick, maybe a house <laughs> fell down. We were like, oh, <laughs> and we finally looked up, Patty, and we realized, oh my gosh, we've been in this dribble wheel going, 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 going. And now we're looking up and we're like, wait, that way wasn't serving us at all. It was only serving everybody else. And um, and we don't want to do that that way anymore. And so now it's like, oh, well, let's reimagine and let's figure out how we would move it forward and how we would do things in the, in the future. And that's been yeah. such an exciting process. But I think collectively we're all in that moment or heading to that moment. Like that's probably why all this happened, right? I don't know why it happened, but it's happened. And, but when you have so many people over the last four years calling for change, something has to change in our species. Something has to change with humans. Something has to change with humanity. Well, it's here. Yeah. We're in it. And it is a moment of, deep contemplation. I don't think there's anyone that I know that isn't contemplating and looking at themselves in some form or other. Yeah. And then you have the family dynamic on top of it. You know, people are, you know, the gratitude that's coming out of, oh my God, I'm so grateful for the teachers of my kids. I'm so teaching, you know, I'm so grateful for the schools. You know, I was, you know, I, the things that we took for granted mm -hmm. are also being brought to the surface. You know, the people that helped us move forward, the people that even our practice, we kind of took for granted. And now people are starting to see um, the things that are important and they're prioritizing things differently. And there's many things that are, you know, everybody's in different, you know, um, situations in this uh, pandemic. You know, some people are dealing with huge amounts of loss. Uh, some people are, have lost their jobs. Some people have lost their businesses. So every, and some people are doing really well on Zoom. Some people are doing really well with their online businesses. And it's, it's, there's so many different facets happening. Um, but I feel that there's this, you know, better together. We're all in this together. Um, when I was doing the tapping together uh, videos early in March and April, you know, there's this togetherness that I think people are really uh, recognizing right now. Well, because we're together in a different way, Patty, think about it. Yep. Trying to get any of us to be present pre-COVID was a massive <laughs> feat. Now we're home we're not running around like you said, we're not going to dinner, so we are more present. So I think we have the ability to connect better than ever. Like I was speaking at Tony Robbins seminar last week and we had 23,000 people on a Zoom from 138 wow. countries. And I was afraid I wouldn't be able to connect with people because they were on Zoom. I felt them so deeply and they yeah. were so in it and I'm like, wow, what an amazing human experiment. And and that's all I, I can think is that because our lives have calmed down in some ways, obviously, like the the massive chaos that we used to run in, right? Now we're a little bit more grounded to be able to see things, to feel things, to connect better. 
um, I know I'm connecting better with people too in a weird way. Yeah, because we're encountering each other. Hmm. Because there's no audience participation, whether you're a yoga teacher or a meditation teacher in your um or or someone like yourself, you know, there's no audience and the connecting through the people who are listening right now are it's so rich and so deep because it's energetic. You know, I was using Zoom, I started using Zoom five years ago. Hmm. And you know, my my students and people were so grateful that they could attend circles and gatherings and workshops from Paris, from Seattle, from Boston, from Scotland, from Brazil, everywhere. So almost that my community were already resistant free yeah. of the Zoom thing, of the computer thing. So they were seeing the gratitude of other people who couldn't be there in person, that when it came to this transition over, they were also so grateful that they could still uh, we could still encounter each other. We could still be in each other's vibe, each other's energy, each other's, um, we could still shift things Yeah. because so, we had this. And that's a level of, of gratitude that I think we need to um, get into and, and, and really acknowledge. Yeah. And also being considerate of people that everybody's going through this and different, some people don't have any tools. Some people are finding this like they're having an existential crisis. Yeah. You know, even just the gesture of when you go out and letting someone out in traffic because you don't know where they're going. They could be going to the hospital. They could be going to get a test that they're worried about. They could be, you know, having to sit outside their grandparents' house because they can't go in. Mm -hmm. You know, so as being considerate, you know, I think we talk about being kind. There's a lot of this, oh, be kind to others. But I think we need to take a step back to the, from the kindness first and just be considerate of others. Yeah. That we don't know other people's experiences of what they're going through right now. And they don't know yours. Yeah. Patty, and I, having that awareness. I wonder, have you been able to do any Reiki sessions on anyone with COVID, I wonder? Sen, uh, none of my students have taken, which there's hundreds uh, of uh, uh, of COVID, but, you know, some friends of friends that one was in the hospital and, and they, you know, uh, on a, on a, on a incubated and then he, he came to and, and was released. Um, but we collectively send energy to the people who have it. Got it who are in that space in the in-between space because they're hot they're heavily medicated so yeah. we send energy to them so you're able to do not officially reiki um when you're not in front of somebody but energetically you can send them energy right oh no i can do right uh, reiki a distance you can yes i was watching one of your videos and i I saw you and you were talking about how you, when you do Reiki over someone, you're looking for heat in the body, cold, yeah. anything stuck. Um, tingling, you know, tingling is a sign that there's inflammation or the start of a disease is a culmination of energy coming together and it's starting to be an infection or the person's extremely right, run down. And it's going to go into, in Ayurveda, we call it the, the ojas, the ojas is your reserves of energy. In Western uh, talk, that's uh, I'm running on empty. Uh, yeah. I'm running on empty. So when you feel depleted and you go into the ojas, that's when you start to have autoimmune diseases. Mm -hmm. So how do you how do you do Reiki when you're not with somebody and you can't feel? Well, because everything things. is energy. Is everything is is vibration. So I'm connecting in to that person's vibration through time and space. Uh, I can even send it back. Uh, my students at level two will send energy back to each year in their life 
to integrate what I call the glitches, which are the two-year-old that's having a tantrum, but it's in a 48-year-old woman. You know, the five-year-old, the 14-year-old, the 18, the thing that you went through and you send energy, so you're creating a ripple. You're creating a paradox. (laughs) It's like, and then we send it forward as well. Well, because Because you're right, because Anita Morjani, when she was on the show, was talking about how you know, time on the other side, you know, pre- past and present are all, and future are all, you know, yes. the same. Yes. So, so you're saying the similar, a similar thing. You're saying because yeah. we know that you, when you're working with people, can send energy to the two year old because the two year old and the 42 year old here can, they're just different energy lines, like different highways are on it activates. You know, when you have that CEO who's having a ten- temper tantrum, uh-huh. there's your two-year-old right there, not getting its way. Wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like earlier, I was uh, having a mini tantrum of my own, um, and I'm, I'm realizing, oh my God, that was me dealing with unreasonable people in my family growing up. Yes. And it's just happening all over again. <gasps> wow. Yes. Oh, Patty. Yes. And you and when you send the energy back, you never really know what you're going to come. It, it's like the unknown. You don't know what's going to come up. You send it back to a year and you think, oh, that was a really good year. And then you remember or you feel this clearing and then you're like, oh, I know what this is. And then there's the years that you think were really hard, tough years and you send energy and it takes you know, no time at all. So you can never really quite tell. And it is a, it is a, an act of faith that my students put in the process because they want to clean it and they want to integrate the system. How long does it take to clear out all of the tantrums of the past? <laughs> like... Sometimes people, well, they have, they, they have to do it in 30 days, but it, it, uh, they're not consecutive. So sometimes they need to take a break or sometimes they delay the process because things start to shift very quickly in the present. So it usually takes on average a year. Although over the years, it used to be, it could take people three years. It could take people five years. Some people never finished it because they don't want to forgive certain things. They don't want to integrate. They want that glitch still there protecting them that is um, also derailing them. Because it's too hard. Uh, They just don't want to go there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's something I let them sit with until they say, okay, maybe I need to have a session on this or maybe I need to blow this up or maybe maybe I need to do a burning on this or maybe I really need to, whatever it is, we'll do it. I think it's like Popeye or something was like, I can't stand it no more. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so they you finally know, get to that place like okay I gotta do this but then they also send it to future things you know I sent energy to this this today from yesterday what from did our, you send? Our, our better together today I oh. sent energy to this oh. and what? how did you do that what did you do I sat yesterday and I you know tuned into your name into Jeff's into better together what you're creating here and the vibration and I use certain frequencies and vibrations to you know through time and space tomorrow already exists right because the past the present and the future are happening simultaneously that's what they tell you so there's the pen right there's the timeline so there's today there was yesterday and there's tomorrow so if I'm sending energy to you know tomorrow i'm sending it in the timeline because that's how we think of time is flat but if i turn the pen that way it's all on the same wow (laughs) so if i send energy to like an interview that i'm going to or a meeting that i'm going to then i don't need to worry you're setting the tone yeah yeah I'm already sending that energy and also saying to myself, 
well, why am I worried? I've sent energy to it. Interesting. And I know this works because I'm also tuned into it. So wow. there you go. Yeah, I did that. I did that before um, an event where I was going to have to face somebody that had been not kind. And so before I went to the event, I did a meditation and I asked that this be a, a positive encounter and that um, the person saw the truth in their heart and recognized it and, you know, moved on from it and whatever. And and after I did it, I felt really good. And I was like, okay, I'm going to walk in. I'm going to do my thing. I didn't do anything wrong. Um, and the energy completely shifted somebody who was not nice at all. And then all of a sudden they were super nice. Yeah. And so I've, I've dabbled, but <laughs> I, I really like sharing some of these stories with people to let them know what we're really capable of if we actually put our attention there yes yeah it's uh it's also knowing that when we worry we can we're creating that worry of it going to be a confrontation mm. we're also walking in with that vibe with that energy and that energy, we're all reading each other's energy when we walk in a room. Yeah. Someone looks at you and they're like, I don't like their vibe, or I don't like, you know, or I love that vibe. I love what, you know, who's that Who's that person? You know, and they gravitate towards you. People are reading each other's energy all the time. They do it in interviews. First 30 seconds, they know. Yeah. Yeah. So it's true. something that we have to, uh, begin to harness so that we energetically feel into what feels right for you. It's like when I'm working with kids and I say to kids, if something doesn't feel right, run. Yeah. Because children are very energetically aware they don't know why they're repelled by someone. They don't know why something doesn't feel right. But sometimes they don't give themselves permission to run or say what they need to say because they are too afraid. They don't want to be rude to an adult. They don't want to be. So I try and activate that in kids as well as activate it in adults yeah it's like listen to your gut at yes, any age because the gut and the the gut and the brain i think i lost you there <laughs> no we're here you know the chinese call the gut the the brain of the stomach and when you were in the womb the brain and the stomach and the brain and the head was the same and then it splits and then there is a, a a nerve the vagus nerve that goes down the spine into the stomach so imagine this is this is your intuition right this is your knower and your gut is your instincts and when these things are lined your intuition tells you go talk to that person over there and your instincts yeah 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 that feels right and you walk towards them so your your intuition your instincts are a way for you to know what's next for you know what is right for you and sometimes even sitting with it because right now there's some people that are like i don't know whether i stay in my apartment or not or if i stay you know in new york or if i stay in florida or, and just sitting with that okay I, I i i don't know but i know i do know and i'm gonna sit and wait till that thing drops in that tells me what to do because i i do know yeah yeah, that's a really good reminder because I know a lot of people are struggling with that too. Like, where do I go? Where is my home going to be? Because home is changing because a lot of home 
was um i don't know if we just lost power on my camera is that what happened yeah uh, patty you said a lot of energy Hi. to us i think um maybe i overdid it <laughs> this is hilarious well you can use that camera right there that one's on maybe just angle that one over. i walked into someone's house once uh -huh. and all the electricity uh <laughs> tripped oh my god and the kids game box all went off they were like oh patty's here that's so funny okay. well I mean, this has never happened, but this is strange. Um, but Daddy, tell us look, we have the rainbow colors on the screen. <laughs> It's so <laughs> crazy, but we'll get to the bottom of it. But yeah, I think it's an important thing to point out for people because um, a lot of people's home was tied to where their work was. And now work is at home. So now you have a free, you know, kind of pass to move your work, where move your home wherever you want to go. Yes, but I actually think that question was in the mix for a while of where would I want to live? Where would I want to be if I could live anywhere? Yeah. You know, that question had been asked starting 10 years ago when people started to travel and work from home and do YouTube stuff and become influencers and do all this different thing. You know, they were like, oh, where would I want, where do I really want to live that isn't attached to, you know, a city that i have to be in yeah having to be there is not the same as as really wanting to be there yeah absolutely well, so i think there's a and also companies look at all the companies that have said all oh, through to 2021 you are going to be able to work from home this might be a permanent thing oh yeah so this is going to change the demographics this is going to change people saying, you know what, I want to have a farm, I want to have a ranch, mm -hmm. I want to have, you know, uh, uh, an apartment and, you know, in another city and a smaller city, a smaller town, you know, it's really, it, it, and it may even bring some life to some of these smaller towns that have been struggling. Yeah, absolutely. I know really I've always wanted a ranch with a lot of animals, so I feel like we're heading in that direction ourselves as well. Yeah. I mean, I've been thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, rescuing many uh, horses and goats and pygmy goats. Yes, that, that sounds nice while people are, you know, coming in circles and healing. Patty, yeah, yeah, come to Connecticut. That's, I have, that's, I have that's six I have six lots on this property. You can build on one of them. I was saying to Kelsey this morning on our walk, we bought this because there was a lot of acreage involved and I was like, oh, this is a great doomsday property. That's what me and Kevin said. And <laughs> well, it's here. <laughs> well, it's kind of here. And I was like, well, but let's make doomsday the smoothie. Yeah. Smoothie day. So for and, our and smoothie day into the, into, into the butterfly. Yeah. Well, now I was like, we could pick people that we want to live with us on here. We can live off the land. We can have animals and we have a massive garden and I'm like, we can have like our own little community in here. It'd be amazing. So Patty, I would love for you to be here. We would have so much fun. Wouldn't it be fun? I'd be like so joyous. Oh, well, and I want to throw retreats here. I've wanted to do better together retreats yeah. and it's, it's beautiful here. It's so peaceful. So it might be happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> I've been thinking about next year and thinking because right now there are traumas happening that are silently happening in people's lives. You know, the mm -hmm. self-isolation is making people anxious, depressed. Yeah. It's changing their behaviors, but we won't know what those things are. You know, like when you are, you're in a trauma and you're so in the trauma that you're, the cortisone's going in your body and you don't really know until two years later, three years later, how that affected you. Look at 9-11. People I worked with after 9-11 were realizing how that changed their decision-making process mm. of where they wanted to live, what they wanted to do, how they shut down, how they became um, fearful. And it changed them. And this is going to change people as well. Uh, and I want you to know that we, we don't know what those things are right now, mm -hmm. but just to ponder that of, okay, you know, because 
people don't turn agoraphobic overnight. It's little things. Oh, well, I can have things delivered. Oh, well, I, and I don't like to go out and I get anxious now when I get at, when I go out to the grocery store. Yeah. So now we have to, you know, I was even thinking, you know, do I just get a Winnie Bago, take my two dogs and do town halls next year? To, and do <laughs> what? On, and do town halls, you know, oh, to yeah. tap on people. Totally. And, you know, and... Patty on the road. To, yeah, it, because it's, it's um people are really going to need to clear some of the things that this has brought up for them yeah. or uh, that they haven't even energetically they can feel it emotionally they haven't branded it yet yeah absolutely. energetically they can feel people say i feel dense right now i feel paralyzed i feel um i'm taking a lot of naps i get shut down Yep. I'm eating too much. I'm emotionally tranquilizing through food. So there's a lot of things that are going to be needed. We're going to have to address it post this. Yeah. And even <clears throat> like, you know, right now people are recognizing their behaviors that are not congruent with who they are. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. But it's recognizing it and saying, that's okay. You're just scared. You're just anxious. But what is the cause? Oh, it's bringing up my abandonment issues. It's bringing up me being rejected. It's bringing up my fear of being alone. And now I feel alone. Mm -hmm. So let's move through that. Yeah. And let's do you know uh, the dynamic tapping on it you know I just did two workshops um, you know because I've been doing this work for as you know like nearly 20 years mm -hmm. and you know people were asking me what I was I was getting all these emails after heel of like oh my god I do this tapping but I'm not getting the shifts that I felt when I watched heel so what is it that you're doing differently what is it you're and it's the energy you know because some people don't even know emotionally how they feel. Mm -hmm. They just feel shut down. Yeah. They haven't even unpacked it or uh, said, oh, you know what it is? It's that thing that happened to me when I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> they, they just feel like a house has been dropped on them. That's what you said. So that's yeah. what I would start with with the person. Okay, let's start with it feels like a house has been dropped on me. It feels like I'm in this magnetic energy that's dragging me down. I feel like I can't get out of bed in the morning. I feel, I feel, I feel. And then we start to chip away at that. So I, I wrote a book to kind of just unpack it and break it down because when you've been doing something Mm -hmm. so naturally with people that are really signing up to go there since you know years ago then i've been not just working in a laboratory i've been working with real life trials of people mm -hmm. with diagnosis mm -hmm. and creative blocks and inherited beliefs and work being in hostile environments and really you know veterans with ptsd so when you really have, when you've seen this work over nearly two decades, it's time, it was time for me to say, okay, how can I put this together to give tools? And I did two workshops with the community for them to ask questions and work with each other and, you know, test it out on each other and, you know, buddy up. And they were getting huge results. So for me, it's now, okay, let's get the book out. Let's get videos out. So to, to give people exercises, tools that they can do. I love it. Patty, what's your website for people to um, go to to get more on this? Because I know I want to watch the workshops. Um, yeah. Pause enjoy. Pause enjoy .com. Okay. And it's the same on uh, Pause Enjoy. I think it's with Patty on uh, YouTube. And at the beginning beginning of COVID, we we did um, a 21 day because everybody went into panic, right? In, mm -hmm. in March, and I said, okay, let's do 21 days of meditating 
and I'll send you energy and we'll see what topics come up at the time. And it was funny because Governor Cuomo did uh, pause. That's <laughs> I was funny. Like, you know, let's let's pause then. What does pause stand for? It stands for, you know, patience, antibodies, unity, surrender, equanimity. And when we went through all the other other days of what was coming up in the moment, and then I edited it as best I could because I'm not a production company, <laughs> you know, in a little video app, and just put it up on. And people are still doing those meditations and. Yeah and seeing how helpful they are. And then I did some tapping together where it would just be me tapping on myself and you just copied me and went with the flow. We went into stream of consciousness. And I did tapping for, you know, my father was telling me how he was feeling, what he was heating down the park. Other guys were telling me, but they would never come on and do a tap along with me because they didn't want to go into that vulnerability on camera. Yep. <laughs> because they're not, you know, they're just, they just don't want that. So yeah. they, but they were like, this is what to do in the tap along for guys. So I did a tapping together for guys. And then I did a tap along with students of mine who were like, I want to share this with family and friends because I know how much this helps me. Patty, thank you for bearing with us through all of our, um, <laughs> thank you, Patty. our technicalities here. There's a lot of energy, as you said, but, Ooh. um, but I'm excited. <laughs> I feel like, um, there's so many great nuggets in here for people um, who um, may have needed permission um, and may need to kind of look at their limiting beliefs and acquire the tools. And you are definitely um, a gift and we love you. And we're so grateful for you to share your knowledge and everything that you do to add um, good energy into this world. You're amazing. Thank you. All Thank right. You. Well, we will see you soon. I'm going to reach out to you because I think we need we need to get Kevin for sure a little bit of love. Um, <laughs> oh, bless. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, you know, you're you're already making those decisions, but they're getting in the back door. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's letting them in the back door. Patty, oh, my gosh. <laughs> Patty, Kelsey is dying right now because she literally is watching it happen. I I. I have to oh keep laying the hammer down with him. He's like, oh, well, this person's really nice. I'm just going to let them leave stuff here. I'm like, no, you just said that they just took so advantage of you and like made a mess. And what? Like, I mean, this is, you know, out of context. Obviously, you don't know what I'm talking about. But I'm like, no, everybody get it out. Get it done. What is going to make you happy? Because he just keeps well, giving in and going. They're going in the back door. You're so, so right. True. Well, tell Kevin that he's actually enabling yeah person mm. oh yeah and he's also cheating the person of doing their own work on themselves yep he's cheating them of their own activation yep by doing it for them oh you know it's done. kind of like people with kids know that it's like if i keep doing this for my kid when is the kid going to um you know, like right. You know, one of my one of my students had said that their child was asking why, but why, but why? And I said, well, ask them. Why do you think that is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they started doing that, and they stopped saying it. They stopped asking. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, I'm going to get you with Kevin. Um, thank you so much, as always. Oh, thank you, and, thank you, and we'll, as always. We will talk soon. Be too oh, soon. Man. Take care. Guys, I am so sorry for all the technicalities. Um, this is hilarious. Kelsey. Dude, I don't even know. <laughs> Wait, can I, I just take even... a picture of your hair right now? Don't move. Don't oh, move. No. Don't move. This is just for oh, your purposes. No. <laughs> I just I'm like <laughs> poor Kelsey is having I'm, I'm over here like having a calm heart attack like you are staying calm oh, and she still smiles through all the shit I'm which trying. is awesome but thank you guys for joining us I don't know where you are if you can <laughs> see me anymore but they can um, see you they can see you but you can find uh, Patty as we said at her website you can also find her on social media at pause and joy you can find Jeff Crane Graham uh, at Kels Meyer too at Maria Menounos and remember be nice people I'm aborting this mission quickly. Be nice people, make good choices, and be present. Oh, man. <laughs>